When you're creating animations, a lot of times you want to animate something drawing. Uh, an example of this would be this frame that you're seeing on screen. Uh, maybe I want this to animate drawing around uh, before some other content comes on screen. Now there's a lot of different ways you can go about this. Ideally, uh, you're going to use a mask, and, and most people using Flash would, would, would guess that you need to use some sort of mask. Uh, the programmers out there might try to write some complex algorithm uh, that's all action script that does the drawing with code. Uh, we're not going to worry about getting that complex here. We're going to do this in the timeline. What I want to do first, though, is I want to show you the wrong way to do it, or the, or the really long and, and, and hard to maintenance way. Uh, what I would do is I have my frame on a different layer, I've created a mask layer, grab my rectangle tool, I always like to use a lime green uh, fill color for all my masks. You don't have to worry about a stroke, strokes don't show up with masks. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a uh, little rectangle here. Now you could do this with a shape tween, you could do this with a motion tween. Um, if you're going to use a motion tween, this of course has to be converted to a movie clip. Uh, I'm going to keep this a shape tween for right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come along in my timeline, I'm going to hit F6 to put a keyframe, and I'm going to adjust the mask, make it longer. Right click between those frames and add a shape tween. Now before this will work, I need to actually tell Flash to treat this layer as a mask layer. And if I run my movie, you'll see that first line begin to animate. Now, to get the entire frame to animate, what I would need to do is keep doing this. If I unlock the mask layer and I come further in the timeline, I might put another keyframe. This is where it gets tricky because if I attempt to, you know, maybe draw another line here or something and add a shape tween, the shape tweens will start to do unusual things. And as I move the playhead back and forth, you can see it flashes just kind of guessing. Um, at the same time, I, uh, if I want to actually pull this off with a shape tween, I'm going to undo what I just did here. At this point, I would have to actually start drawing frame by frame animations. And that would consist of maybe using the brush tool. Um, let me get my tool settings here. And putting a keyframe and drawing a little bit putting another keyframe and drawing a little bit and potentially keep doing this all the way. Keyframe draw, keyframe draw, keyframe draw. Um, now if I run it, you know, you can kind of see that line is now drawing. The tricky thing is when it comes to timing. You want to speed it up, you want to slow it down. It's really hard to keep it looking good. So this is not the correct way to do it. I'm going to save this file and close it. The correct way to do it is with an embedded animation. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a mask, but the mask is going to be one movie clip, but inside that movie clip there's going to be a number of different movie clips animating. So let's see how this looks. I'm going to start out like I did before with my rectangle tool. I'm just going to draw a little rectangle right up here. Now what I'm going to do is convert this rectangle to a movie clip. I'm going to modify, convert to symbol. I'm going to call this rectangle a mask. It's the mask object. And I'm going to actually give it left registration. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this uh, in a little bit. It's now a movie clip I have on my stage starting right here. The thing is though, I don't want to animate this right here because I'm going to need multiple objects animating and masks can only have one object on a layer. So if I want to have multiple objects, I've got to actually wrap this in another movie clip. This is going to seem a little goofy right now, but you'll see why. So with this movie clip selected, I'm going to actually convert it to a movie clip again. I'm going to call it mask container. And the registration doesn't really matter with this, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Now I'm going to double click the movie clip to go inside of the mask container. You can see my breadcrumb trail shows me that I'm in the mask container. And selected right now is my mask movie clip. I'm going to rename this later and call it mask one. 
And I'm using CS5, which gives me the power to be able to right click on this and create a motion tween. If you're using an older version of Flash, uh, like CS3 or before, you can actually still do what I'm doing here. You just have to do your, your animations in the timeline. So this movie clip's gonna start on frame one, as it is, and on frame uh, 20 or so, or 24 where I'm at, I'm going to resize it. I'm gonna hold the Alt or Option key while doing this so that it resizes from its registration point all the way along there. And you'll see this movement now happen. Now the reason I gave this left registration initially was because I don't want this edge to move at all. And if you keep it center registration, you'll actually see the edge of it move a little bit as it's animating because technically the object is moving as well. Um, but right now I gave it left registration. That keeps that left edge nice and firm. That's my first animation. I'm going to make another layer now. And I'm going to make name it Mask 2. And just after this first animation starts, I'm going to put a keyframe go to my library and find another copy of my little mask object. Bring that down on my stage. After I've added it to my stage, I'm going to want this mask to go down the first vertical side here. So I'm going to actually rotate it 90 degrees. The reason I'm rotating it 90 degrees is again because I want that edge to start up at the top. Now as this gets bigger, I'm not actually animating it yet, but I just want to show you as it gets bigger, you'll notice if I pull it straight down, it's actually falling off that line. Um, I could angle this and pull it down the line, although you will sometimes get some weird shifting. So in order to fix this, what I'm gonna actually do before I start animating this is just make it wider. Because again, it's a mask. I don't care how wide it is. Next, I'm gonna create a motion tween. I'm gonna give myself uh, a few frames to work with here. And on this last frame, I'm going to pull it down to here. Now I'm going to repeat this process two more times by making a new layer, and I'll name it Mask 3. I'm going to add a keyframe just after the last layer. I'm going to drag down a copy of my mask object and rotate it so that its registration point is facing the direction I want it to start. I'll position it where I want it to go, create a motion tween, give myself some more frames to work with here, and on the last frame of the animation, I'm going to grow the object to get as big as I want it to be. So once more, mask four, I'm going to put a keyframe right at the end of it. My library, I'm going to drag down a copy of my mask. I'm going to rotate it the opposite direction there so I can get its registration point where I want it. Start it off. Now, again, this is a vertical one, so I'm going to make it a little bit wider so I can make sure it gets the entire line as it's drawing. Add a motion tween. And then give myself some frames to work with. Now, as I've been doing this, the rest of the layers have disappeared because they don't have frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert some frames on all the layers. I'm just hitting F5 to do that across all the different layers so they all continue to exist. And if I just hit the Enter key, I'll actually see my animations drawing. Let's go back up to the main timeline. And let's make sure that this layer is treated as a mask layer. And I'm just going to hit Control Enter or Command Enter to run it and watch it draw. Now it's a little jerky still. I have a little bit of timing to, to work in here, but you can see it's actually drawing all those sides. And even if you look in the upper right hand corner here, I missed a spot with my drawing. And this is actually the benefit of doing it this method is if I had missed that originally, I'd have to go back through all the keyframes that I've created and add a cover right there. However, in order to edit this, I just have to go back into the movie clip and find that third animation, which is right here. And that's the one that, uh, oops, sorry, the second animation. And that's the one where that's missing it a little bit. I could actually just change how it's starting 
a little bit. But actually, I'm going to click and drag the the um, by the actual animation here because that's going to actually adjust it back up a little ways. And then on the last frame, I can extend it back down to make sure it's going as far as I want. If I run my animation, you'll see there's no longer that little corner right there. Now adjusting this is actually pretty easy to do. Firstly, I might want everything just to go a little faster. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my playhead. Uh, somewhere between these frames and I'm just going to take out frames by hitting shift F5. So I've just hit shift F5 to reduce the number of frames that are there. I can continue to do this until I get the right amount of speed that I want. The nice thing about doing it this way is it takes these frames off across all the layers and you don't have to worry about uh, layers behaving or disappearing and not showing up the right amount. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of easing to this, to add just a little physics. The problem with CS5 animations is that if you apply easing the traditional way with your properties panel, the easing factor gets applied across the entire animation. So the shortcut to get around this isn't the ideal way to do it, but it's actually pretty fast. I'm going to hold the control or command key and click right after that last keyframe. I'm then going to right click on that and tell Flash to split motion. Now this is at the bottom of my right click menu so you're not going to see it on screen here. But I chose to split motion and it actually separated this into two separate animations. I'm going to do the same thing here. Right click, split motion, right click, split motion, and I don't have to do it for the last one. Now again, in order to select that frame I had to either hold the control or command key and click on it. Now what I can do is each of these sections that are that are now split off, I can go to my properties panel and add easing to them. I'm going to add a hundred percent easing and this is going to ease it in 100 percent. So I'm doing that to all four. At this point if I run it, you'll see now how it slows down a little before it gets to each corner and this kind of gives it the, the uh, look of someone drawing it and kind of slowing it on as they get the corners to draw those correctly. So really quick way to be able to add some custom functionality uh, to drawing in Flash and, and simulating something drawing and the reason or the way we got to, to doing that is because we actually made a movie clip and put an embedded animation. As far as the main timeline is concerned there is only one object sitting on that mask layer and it's just a movie clip. But inside that movie clip are all the animations that are making up the mask and giving me the ability to very easily customize and, and alter what I want it to look like.